welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where we explore the stories found within the world of video games, movies, comic books, and anything in between. Last time in the Mortal Kombat timeline, we covered the history of the Lin Kuei assassin Smoke, including his origins, his transformation into a cyborg, and final dark fate. Smoke. Smoke is dead. I am an Enra. Today, we're covering the history of Scorpion. Quite possibly the most popular character in Mortal Kombat, and considered by many fans to be the face of the series right alongside Sub-Zero. No true Lin Kuei could stomach you. Does that include your brother? What brother? <laughs> An undead specter with a tragic backstory involved with just about every major event in some way, and has been through more character development than any other fighter. And his most defining characteristic has been his ongoing feud with Sub-Zero and the Lin Kuei. Scorpion's creation is closely tied with that of the original Sub-Zero, Bihan. Both characters were envisioned as part of a ninja clan, with one being a possible runaway and the other acting as the hunter. Due to the video game memory limitations of the time, Sub-Zero and Scorpion were simple palette swaps of each other. One blue, one yellow. Blue represented ice, yellow represented fire, and actually the original costume for filming purposes was red, purchased from a costume shop in Chicago and modified. The different colors inspired the storyline of rival clans fighting each other. Aside from a change in color, Scorpion was also given a different moveset from Sub-Zero. His signature move allowed him to hurl a harpoon, described as a kunai, and inspired by the ancient Asian weapon known as the rope dart. The kunai pulls in Scorpion's opponents and gives him a free hit. If it wasn't for the input of some of the original game's actors, the Scorpion we know and love today may have ended up very differently. Daniel Piscina, known best for playing Johnny Cage at the time, came up with the move since he didn't like the original idea. At first, Scorpion's kunai was going to be a lasso, but Piscina thought it was too similar to Wonder Woman. And along with this special move, Scorpion's famous catchphrases were born. Get over here and come here. The phrases were the idea of Richard DiVizio, the man that played Kano, and they were voiced directly by Ed Boon, co-creator of Mortal Kombat. Scorpion's infamous skull face was also an idea from Richard DiVizio to further separate him from Sub-Zero, and it was inspired by the skeletons from 1963's Jason and the Argonauts. Scorpion was such a unique character and became so entangled with Mortal Kombat's legacy that he appeared in every single main entry, aside from the original version of Mortal Kombat 3. He's even featured as part of NetherRealm Studios' current logo. But what's Scorpion's story? Who's the man behind the skull? And what beef does he have with Sub-Zero's clan? Sub-Zero's Lin Kuei clan of assassins and Scorpion Shirai Ryu ninja clan was once one and the same. Long ago, a man named Takeda left his birthplace of Japan and traveled to China to become a member of the Chinese Lin Kuei assassins. He became Lin Kuei, learned all of their techniques, and became disillusioned with the clan's ways. He eventually desired to leave the clan and return to his homeland of Japan. But leaving the Lin Kuei was a crime punishable by death. Takeda escaped and returned home. Many of his skills spread throughout Japan and evolved into its own fighting form called ninjutsu, which used supernatural abilities and weapons. The Lin Kuei were outraged by what they saw as a betrayal and marked Takeda for death but he used his reputation to establish his own clan, the Shirai Ryu, dressed in a similar fashion to the Lin Kuei and wore different colors to mock them. From that day forward, the Shirai Ryu and Lin Kuei were bitter enemies, constantly at war with each other, and Takeda escaped death until he was successfully poisoned in his later years and died. The man that would become Scorpion was born into the Shirai Ryu as Hanzo Hasashi. His father was a former member of the clan, and he wanted his son to live a normal life away from the clan. But Hanzo joined the Shirai Ryu despite his father's wishes and became one of their most skilled members. His success as a Shirai Ryu gained him tremendous respect from his fellow ninjas, and he formed a family with his wife Harumi and his young son Satoshi. His family and clan were his life, and he would do anything to protect them. But one day, the evil sorcerer from the Nether Realm, Quan Chi, reached out to the Shirai Ryu Grandmaster with a job to steal a sacred map leading to the Amulet of Shinnok, the Elder God of Death. Unknown to them, Quan Chi was secretly plotting to use the amulet to restore Shinnok. To ensure success, he also hired Bihan of the Lin Kuei to do the same. Same, manipulating a confrontation between the two. A confrontation that would lead to Hanzo's death. The map is mine, Sub Zero. <laughs> uh, 
Sub-Zero returned to the Lin Kuei Grand Master furious that Scorpion was also there. It was an unnecessary confrontation, and Bihan had no choice but to kill him. But the Lin Kuei Grand Master was overjoyed. In return for successfully returning the map, Quan Chi slaughtered the entire Shirai Ryu clan, including Hanzo's wife and child, in the guise of Sub-Zero. Scorpion was tipped off. He knew I was breaking into that temple, and if he wasn't there, there wouldn't have been a battle. You are responsible for this sorcerer. Tell me. What about our payment? Oh yes, I... I almost forgot. The bones of your arch nemesis, and leader of Scorpion's ninja clan. <laughs> our ancient foes vanquished in one transaction. And I've personally made certain that every last remnant of their clan has been eliminated. Sub-Zero was sent on another mission to retrieve Shinnok's amulet, and while he was searching for it, Scorpion's spirit did not rest. It was thrust into the Nether Realm and became twisted with rage. He became the undead spirit of vengeance, and the man Hanzo Hasashi was consumed by the hellfire inside. Scorpion swore revenge on Sub-Zero for his death and the death of his clan, and he would get the chance when Sub-Zero's mission took him into the Nether Realm. Somehow you have retained your mortality, which would mean you are vulnerable to death. I am Scorpion. You killed me in cold blood. I had no choice. You could have let me live. Then I would be the dead one. But my clan and family would still be alive. What? It wasn't enough to kill me. You had to destroy every last remnant of my being, including my wife and child. You're mistaken. Quan Chi is responsible for their deaths. Words will not save you, Lin Kuei warrior. Scorpion was defeated for now, and Sub-Zero eventually did retrieve Shinnok's amulet. Soon after, he was forced by Raiden to undo his mistake, and he saved Earthrealm from Shinnok's return. Before the original Mortal Kombat tournament, Sub-Zero was hired to kill Shang Tsung, and was invited to compete. Although Sub-Zero had defeated Scorpion in the Netherrealm, his spirit refused to rest, and Quan Chi took advantage of him in an effort to control him. Quan Chi told Scorpion that Sub-Zero would be at the tournament, and that his vengeance would be satisfied with Sub-Zero's death. Before Bihan could accomplish his goal, Scorpion tracked down his Lin Kuei enemy and took his revenge. <laughs> Scorpion wins fatality. After Bihan's death, his younger brother Kwai Liang took over the mantle of Sub-Zero and participated in the events of Mortal Kombat 2. Scorpion discovered that Sub-Zero was participating in the tournament and was furious, believing that Bihan had returned. He watched Sub-Zero from the shadows and witnessed him sparing an opponent's life out of mercy, something that Bihan would have never done. He learned that this new Sub-Zero was Bihan's younger brother, and somewhere deep inside, Hanzo Hasashi's sense of honor bore through his endless anger. After confronting Sub-Zero, he allowed him to live and took it upon himself to become his protector, something the younger Sub-Zero would never be aware of. Scorpion saw this as a way to atone for murdering his brother, until Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn, and Scorpion returned to the Nether Realm. During the invasion of Earthrealm in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy, Shao Kahn also attempted to invade the Nether Realm and take it as his own. Scorpion was one of the many spirits set loose during the invasion and chose not to pick any allegiances. He had no friends or enemies and stood alone witnessing the downfall of Earthrealm. Shao Kahn knew the might of Scorpion's wrath and offered him a place in his armies, but Scorpion discovered that one of Shao Kahn's targets was Sub-Zero. To fulfill his pledge of protecting him, Scorpion sided with Raiden's chosen warriors and fought against the armies of the Outworld. As Liu Kang made his way to Shao Kahn and defeated him again, 
Khan was severely weakened and retreated to Outworld with his forces, but a threat from the past would re-emerge. The Elder God of Death, Shinnok, that Bihan had stopped previously returned, and the realms were in chaos as he invaded them with his demon armies. Scorpion was uninterested in the conflict, but Quan Chi sought to claim his allegiance. The evil sorcerer manipulated Scorpion and convinced him that Bihan had slain his clan, but Kwai Liang was the Lin Kuei that slaughtered his wife and child. Scorpion had been secretly protecting Kwai Liang since the events of Mortal Kombat 2 and swore that he would pay for the death of his family. He came face to face with Sub-Zero again and attacked him in a blind fury, but would soon learn the truth about his past. By defeating you, Sub-Zero, I have avenged the death of my family and clan. Now my soul can finally rest. Your soul will never rest, Scorpion. The Lin Kuei may have been responsible for your murder, but your family's true killer still remains free. If you are not the murderer, then who is? I am the one you seek. To defeat my nemesis Sub-Zero, I needed the power of a Spectre. You've done my bidding well, Scorpion, but now I must return you to the Nether Realm. Quan Chi attempted to send Scorpion back to the Nether Realm and keep him imprisoned there, but Scorpion ran towards him and sent them both there. The target of his vengeance should have been Quan Chi all this time. Shinnok had been defeated by Liu Kang, and Quan Chi spent years in the Nether Realm running away from Scorpion. Scorpion chased Quan Chi, often capturing him, brutalizing and torturing him, then letting him go to create maximum fear. Quan Chi desperately looked for a way to escape Scorpion's vengeance and met two Oni, demonic beings that inhabit the Nether Realm, named Draman and Moloch. Draman and Moloch held back Scorpion and distracted him long enough for Quan Chi to gather enough power to open a portal and escape the Nether Realm. Scorpion followed him through the portal, but ended up in a different location. Quan Chi had discovered the immortal army of Onaga the Dragon King and formed a deadly alliance with Shang Tsung to control them. During the events of Deadly Alliance, Scorpion hunted Quan Chi, but Moloch and Draman had also escaped the Nether Realm and were determined to bring back Scorpion as their plaything. He fought them in Shang Tsung's palace, and his power was so great that they had no choice but to throw him into a soul nado, believing that the power of the spiritual tornado would tear him apart. Raiden had confronted Shang Tsung and Quan Chi in combat, but Onaga the Dragon King had been revived and interrupted the battle. Onaga was intent on destroying and merging all the realms during the events of Mortal Kombat Deception, and Scorpion managed to escape the soul nado and found himself in a void where he came face to face with the Elder Gods. From the heavens, they showed Scorpion the destruction of Onaga's return, and Raiden's final stand against him. They'd been watching Scorpion for some time and enhanced his abilities, giving him a new mission, to seek and destroy Onaga before he could unmake the realms. In return, they promised to resurrect the Shirai Ryu and his family. Scorpion searched the realms for Onaga's whereabouts to fulfill the mission from the Elder Gods, and crossed paths with Shijinko, also on a quest to destroy Onaga. But ultimately, Shijinko, the warrior that had unintentionally helped him return, was the one that defeated him in combat. Although Scorpion had failed to destroy Onaga, he did continue to serve as the champion of the Elder Gods, but being a slave to the gods had its cost. They revived his clan and family, as promised, but as undead warriors like Scorpion. He saw this as a betrayal and swore the Elder Gods would pay for crossing him. During the events of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, the half-god warrior Taven and his brother Dagon were crucial in preventing the end of reality. Scorpion couldn't attack the Elder Gods directly, but could destroy their heroes. If his family and clan wouldn't be restored to normal, all of reality would pay, and he confronted Taven. Who are you? I am Scorpion. I seek revenge. Revenge against me? Against the Elder Gods. They betrayed me. As reward for doing their bidding, they promised to resurrect my clan. They are no longer dead. They are the undead. For this treachery, I will eliminate the Elder Gods' only means of saving the realms from Armageddon. I will destroy both your brother and you.
Prepare to face me in hell! Taven defeated Scorpion, but in the final battle to claim the reality-altering power of Blaze, Scorpion joined the forces of darkness. Like the other warriors involved, Scorpion was killed in the battle, his back pierced by one of Sub-Zero's ice blades. Shao Kahn claimed the power, winning the day, and Raiden sent a desperate message to the past in order to change history. This created an altered timeline during the era of the original Mortal Kombat where Scorpion would play a much bigger role. In this timeline, Sub-Zero still defended Earthrealm from Shinnok in the past, and Hanzo Asashi still died, but he participated in the defense of the Shirai Ryu. Hanzo fought bravely against the Onslaught, and Quan Chi still posed as Sub-Zero. In his last moments on Earthrealm, Quan Chi held Scorpion's head, and as he faded away, the last thing he saw was his deceased, frozen family. His soul plunged into the Nether Realm, and Quan Chi had him tortured for his own delight. But Hanzo's rage was so great that the Hellfire meant to torture him didn't burn his body. It was becoming part of him, threatening to consume the man inside. Quan Chi made empty promises of vengeance and justice, and Scorpion was born. And the sorcerer made the undead specter his slave. Scorpion was resurrected to participate in the tournament on Shang Tsung's island, and demanded immediately to face Sub-Zero. Who among you is worthy of this challenge? Where is the Lin Kuei, Sub-Zero? He killed my family and clan. I will have his head. I know it is you, Kung Lao. The Shaolin monks chose Liu Kang to represent your order in this tournament. I am Liu Kang's equal. That remains to be seen. Watch and see. I accept the challenge. Kung Lao. Never mind the Lin Kuei. Now you face a Shaolin. You will regret your impulsiveness. Scorpion wins. You are not yet a warrior. Scorpion defeated Kung Lao in combat and demanded Sub-Zero again, and Raiden had a vision that Bihan's death would create the dark warrior Noob Saibot. Both Raiden and Nightwolf attempted to sway Scorpion from his path of vengeance. Your aggression is misplaced. What do you know of my You are not the only one whose people have been victimized. But I have found new purpose in serving the spirits. Scorpion. I understand your desire for revenge, but Nightwolf is right. There are other ways in which you may find peace. Sub-Zero deserves death. Defeat Sub-Zero if you must, but do not kill him. I fear his death will give rise to a more treacherous foe. I will have my revenge. Spare Sub-Zero's life, and I will request that the Elder Gods return the Shirai Ryu to the realm of mortals. For the first time since his family's death, Scorpion felt hope. If he kept from killing Sub-Zero, there was a possibility that his entire clan could be restored by the Elder Gods. But the tension between the Lin Kuei and Shirai Ryu would still cause conflict, and push him closer to the edge. The Lin Kuei, Cyrax, and Sektor were present in the tournament and celebrated the death of Scorpion's clan, before his rage was tested against Bihan. Scorpion. Your inferior clan is dead. Soon you will join them. My clan may walk the earth once more. I will have my revenge, but I will not kill Sub-Zero. Or cannot. You! The Shirai Ryu are dead. You will suffer as they did. To hell with your clan. No, to hell with you! <laughs> The Nether Realm. This is where I was reborn. This is where you will pay. Scorpion wins. I have avenged my family and clan. 
This is your retribution? Scorpion, kill him. I... I will not. He has been beaten. Have you forgotten? What is this? No. Your family. That is not me! Ouch. Scorpion's memories of his clan's deaths were fragmented, and he couldn't see through Quan Chi's manipulations. The weight of what he had done hit him. He killed the man he promised to keep alive, and lost his only chance at getting his family back. As a slave of Quan Chi, he was forced to fight against Earthrealm and continued to do so after Shang Tsung's defeat. During the second tournament, now being held in Outworld, the younger Sub-Zero Kwai Liang was searching for his brother's killer, and made demands to Shao Kahn to let him face Scorpion. They fight and die for your amusement. My brother participated in this folly. I do so only to face his killer. And you shall. What is this? You are not Sub-Zero. I am his family and clan. I fight for his honor. He had no honor. And you will die as he did. <laughs> Sub-Zero wins. For my brother! Sub-Zero had won the battle, but the Lin Kuei was going through a transformation, and Kwai Liang was taken to be turned into a cyborg. Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn, just like in the previous timeline, and during the invasion of Earthrealm, Scorpion stayed on the sidelines in the Netherrealm, protecting his master Quan Chi. Raiden arrived looking to make some sort of allegiance with Quan Chi against Shao Kahn, but Scorpion stood in his way. It disappoints me to see you here. Save your pity. I will have an audience with Quan Chi. You may address me. I will inform him. Is this why you chose not to save your family and clan? To maintain your place at his feet? Do not talk of my family, Raiden. Fetch your master, Scorpion. I... Quan Chi had revealed that Shao Kahn had already promised him some of Earthrealm's souls, and Raiden's warriors had been turned into his undead revenants. Eventually, Shao Kahn was defeated by Raiden and punished by the Elder Gods, and the way was now open for Shinnok's return. And work to perfection, Lord Shinnok. Shao Kahn was blinded by rage. How easily he was convinced that the Elder Gods would ignore his merging the realms. Yet the Thunder God still lives. No matter. Neither Earth Realm nor Outworld can now withstand the Nether Realm's onslaught. It is time. Soon I will be free. Earth realm and outworld. During the events of Mortal Kombat X, Shinnok unleashed his demon armies on Earthrealm. The Wind God Fujin, alongside Raiden, stood against his forces near the Sky Temple, a location that Raiden used to meditate and ponder his role as Earthrealm's protector. During the attack, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage, and the blind swordsman Kenshi led a special forces team into battle, and Scorpion, following the orders of Quan Chi, attacked with his revenant partner, Sub-Zero. Get over here! 
damn, I'm good. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of yourself, aren't you? The Special Forces team found their way to Raiden and Fujin, and Johnny Cage defeated Shinnok. With Shinnok weakened, Raiden was able to successfully absorb him inside the amulet. But Quan Chi escaped and he was on the run, now a fugitive from the Special Forces. Sonya and Johnny were able to successfully follow his trail, and Scorpion attempted to protect his master again. <laughs> I've got this son of a bitch. Defeating Quan Chi broke the hold he had on some of the revenants. Sub-Zero, Jax, and Scorpion were all restored, freed from his control, and the sorcerer escaped into the Netherrealm with his life. In this altered timeline, Hanzo, no longer an undead specter, was still unaware that Quan Chi was behind the death of his clan, and struggled to deal with his anger and loss. After he was rescued, he formed a bond with Kenshi of the Special Forces, a man wise beyond his years, and gifted with supernatural spiritual abilities. He helped Hanzo overcome his rage and helped him control his abilities as Scorpion. The man, Hanzo Hasashi, had returned and was inspired to reform a new Shirai Ryu. He focused on gathering recruits that experienced loss during Shinnok's invasion and helped them focus their energy into a new purpose. Raiden visited the Elder Gods with Shinnok's amulet to consult them on destroying it for good. But the amulet wasn't just a source of power, it was Shinnok's prison. If the amulet were destroyed, Shinnok would be released again. So the Elder Gods proposed another plan. They locked the amulet away in a dark dimension and used powerful keys to lock it away. Daggers called the Kamidogu, each representing the remaining realms. Each blade had tasted the blood of the One Being, the original entity that the universe was said to have sprung from. With all the blades united, they pierced Raiden and his blood was used to seal the Dark Dimension, containing Shinnok's amulet. The ritual was complete, but the daggers had to be kept safe. If one individual collected them, they would be able to summon Shinnok's amulet. Raiden separated the daggers among safe locations in Earthrealm. One was given to Scorpion to be safeguarded with the Shirai Ryu, simply telling him that it was a ceremonial dagger that needed safekeeping. But Quan Chi's plans to resurrect Shinnok weren't over. The sorcerer reached out to a cleric named Havoc from the Chaos Realm, a realm of total anarchy that aimed to spread discord among the universe. He made a deal with Havoc to retrieve Shinnok's amulet. In exchange, he granted him with powerful blood magic derived from a vampire called Natara. This was a form of dark magic that acted as an immense power enhancer at the cost of leaving the user incredibly weakened. Unknown to Raiden, Havoc used his newfound powers to corrupt the Kamidogu, turning them into his own weapons. If someone possessed one of the daggers and cut themselves with it, 
they would invoke a ritual called the Blood Code, which would give the user incredible powers, but they would be completely open to Havoc's control. Havoc decided to collect the daggers using his powers and take the amulet for himself. On Earthrealm, Kenshi continued going on missions with the Special Forces and went undercover to find the leader of the Red Dragon Clan, Dagon. But his cover was exposed and he was targeted by the Red Dragons. While searching for Kenshi, they found out he had a son with a woman in Thailand, a fact that he wasn't even aware of. While the Red Dragons were looking for him, they found her. But the boy had already been sent away. His mother defended herself bravely against the assault, but she was eventually killed, and Kenshi discovered her body. Soon after, he found his son Takeda and took the boy with him. Kenshi went on the run with him as a Red Dragon unit led by their commander Su Hao chased them. He suffered an arrow injury to his leg and it seemed like all hope was lost, but Kenshi had led them exactly where he wanted them to be. They had chased the pair directly into Shirai Ryu territory and Hanzo didn't take lightly to trespassers in his land. Like a demon appearing out of nowhere, Hanzo hurled his kunai directly into Su Hao's cybernetic heart and sent his fist directly through his head, instantly killing the Red Dragon. Fatality and one of the least liked Mortal Kombat characters of all time. He gave the Red Dragons one last chance to leave as his new Shirai Ryu appeared behind him. Afterwards, Kenshi introduced his son Takeda to Hanzo. He knew that the boy would want revenge for his mother's death and hid the truth from him, and Hanzo understood what the pain of loss could turn a person into. Hanzo agreed to honor their friendship and took Takeda in for training as a Shirai Ryu. Hanzo was a tough teacher, stern and demanding perfection, and Takeda struggled with his training over time and developed a rivalry with a fellow Shirai Ryu named Fox. Takeda lost many battles with his training partners, but grew stronger from each fight. On one of those mornings, Raiden paid a surprise visit to Hanzo to ensure that the Kamidogu he gave him was still safe. He knew something was wrong and claimed that Shinnok's invasion had damaged cosmic barriers that protected Earthrealm and a demon broke through. The demon he spoke about was in fact Havoc manipulating the daggers, and Hanzo knew that if Raiden appeared, danger would be on the horizon. One of the daggers had already been stolen, and Raiden sent Sub-Zero to retrieve it. Sub-Zero found its location, but it was no longer there. Kano of the Black Dragon Clan had already retrieved it and cut Sub-Zero's face with it, causing a permanent scar. The Blood Code had been invoked, and Sub-Zero's powers multiplied and was being controlled by Havoc. He took the dagger and left after ripping out Kano's cybernetic eye implant. Raiden had no idea that a possessed and almost unstoppable Sub-Zero was wandering around, and Hanzo Asashi was an intelligent man. He knew Raiden was hiding the true purpose of his visit and pushed the boys to their limit in their trainings to prepare them for the possibility of having to fight a powerful demon. But Havoc's influence was already spreading and began speaking to Fox through the dagger. That night in his sleep, Havoc forced Fox to take the dagger hidden in the Shirai Ryu temple and cut his face off to invoke the Blood Code. Fox, under Havoc's control, went one by one, killing every single member of the Shirai Ryu in their sleep quietly except Takeda. Fox tied up Grandmaster Hanzo and attempted to convince Takeda to kill him, but Takeda would never hurt the master he had become so close to, the man that gave him a home and taught him everything he knew. He attacked Fox and Hanzo displayed his true power, invoking Scorpion from within. Although he was fully human, he had learned to tap into his previous rage and invoke the powers of Hellfire. If he summoned the power for too long, he risked falling under Scorpion's complete control again. For killing all of his students, Fox had to pay with his life, and Scorpion burned him with the Hellfire. But the Kamidogu made him almost impervious, and Takeda successfully attacked him from behind, cutting him open. Takeda and Hanzo were now the only remaining Shirai Ryu, and mourned the loss of their brothers together. The clan he had rebuilt from nothing was taken from him again, and he took Takeda with him to find Raiden, the god that gave him the dagger, and indirectly killed his clan. Raiden was with Fujin in the Sky Temple, trying to figure out what was causing the disturbance throughout the realms. Kamidogu from the Realm of Order gave him enhanced sight before, and not knowing it was cursed by Havoc, he cut himself with it. Hanzo and Takeda were now within reach of the Sky Temple, and noticed that the electrical storm around it was getting worse. An out-of-control Raiden appeared and mercilessly attacked him. Taken completely by surprise, Hanzo barely had time to react, and Takeda stabbed the god from behind with his sword as Hanzo yelled at him to stay back. The boy wasn't prepared for such a powerful foe, and Raiden summoned an electric attack to strike Takeda, leaving him severely injured. Hanzo summoned his inner power again and teleported Takeda to safety, then stole the dagger from Raiden and teleported away again. He knew it was the dagger's doing since he had seen what it did to Fox, and Raiden was out of his mind. But now that he was away from the dagger's influence, Hanzo wrapped his chain around him and held him in place until he could get a hold of himself, and his sense of self returned. Raiden 
realized he had made a mistake and rushed with Takeda and Hanzo to the Jinsei Chamber, the source of Earthrealm's life force. He used the Jinsei to heal Takeda and return him from near death, stronger than ever. Hanzo confronted Raiden and yelled at him for withholding information, and Raiden explained the importance of the Kamidogu. The entire world was at stake and Hanzo was the only existing warrior that Raiden could confide in. All of the daggers were accounted for at the current time, with the exception of the one that Sub-Zero had. Raiden urged Hanzo to find Sub-Zero and save him from the dagger's corruption, and Hanzo agreed after being urged by Takeda. The pair traveled to Japan and found an entire city frozen. Hanzo was shocked at Kwai Liang's abilities. His powers weren't even close to this level, under Quan Chi's control. Hanzo confronted Sub-Zero and demanded to know if he was speaking with Kwai Liang or the demon controlling him. But Kwai Liang was nowhere to be found, and the Blood Code had infused Sub-Zero with more power. Fight! your death. Prepare to rejoin your clan. This is the end of you. Behold my power. After a massive ice blast, the blood magic powering Kwai Liang ran out. He was back to himself and confused over what just happened. Hanzo escaped from his icy prison and attacked Sub-Zero, struggling to control his rage and remembering the death of his clan. Sub-Zero pleaded for him to stand down. He had no desire to fight any longer, but the influence with Scorpion was powerful. Eventually, Hanzo regained control of himself, ended his attack on Sub-Zero, and prepared to return the dagger to Raiden's Sky Temple. Kwai Liang had barely survived the encounter with Hanzo, since the dagger had left him so weakened. But he was found and rescued by the Shaolin master Bo Raicho, and nursed back to health. Raiden thanked Hanzo for retrieving the dagger and sparing Sub-Zero's life, but Hanzo made it clear that he was simply cleaning up Raiden's mistakes. Raiden then sent him to a Shaolin temple in China, dedicated in honor of Liu Kang, where the Kamidogu of the Chaos Realm was being stored. Takeda and Hanzo arrived at the temple and met with one of the masters there, Shijinko, and Hanzo requested the dagger in the name of Raiden, but Shijinko refused to hand it over, claiming that Raiden couldn't be trusted. He was convinced of this by a visitor to the temple, a humble cleric called Havoc. Hanzo immediately recognized him as being the voice behind the daggers, the demon behind the possessions, and Havoc displayed his true form. He had already possessed Shijinko, and everyone else in the temple was also under his control. Takeda was assaulted by a possessed Shijinko, and Hanzo attacked Havoc, pounding his face against the ground and leaving him a bloody mess. But his blood magic abilities instantly brought him back, and he held Takeda hostage. With Takeda's life at risk, Hanzo stopped his attack, and Havoc punched him with such force that he collapsed both of his lungs, leaving him to die. Takeda held his dying master and urged him to fight back, but Hanzo had suffered a severe injury. Havoc saw Hanzo as an agent of chaos and gave Takeda a chance to leave the temple with his life. About to step over the veil of death, Hanzo was being bombarded by images of his family and his failure to save his clan. The memories tore at his soul, but Hanzo knew that none of these images were real. Scorpion was attempting to take him over again, but Hanzo's willpower was immensely strong. Both personalities struggled for control in a back and forth struggle, and the Scorpion personality seemed to have the upper hand. Scorpion tortured Hanzo and reminded him of the pain they had both suffered through their lives. But the human side of Hanzo Hisashi prevailed. He had been mastering how to keep the powers of Scorpion under control and his own rage in check and reclaimed his dominance. Death could not hold Hanzo Hisashi. In the realms of the living, Havoc had enacted his full plans and delivered the daggers to the outworld warlord Reiko and convinced him that his destiny was to become a blood god. Reiko cut himself with all the daggers and believed he was about to gain the ultimate power, but he felt his insides being torn apart and he was in excruciating pain. The daggers had simply made him a vessel for Shinnok's amulet. As Reiko screamed in agony, Havoc grabbed his head and tore it apart, revealing that Shinnok's amulet had arrived, and it appeared inside his head from the Dark Dimension. Havoc had the amulet he needed and traveled to Earthrealm to begin spreading his brand of chaos throughout all of reality. But Takeda had challenged him in combat and had to defend himself from Earthrealm warriors, including Raiden, all being controlled by Havoc. The young man did his best and Havoc prepared to destroy him completely. But at that moment, Hanzo had arrived from Death's Door and caught Havoc by surprise, separating his head from his body. Fatality. As quickly as Hanzo appeared, he disappeared, and Takeda believed him to be dead, lost to Scorpion. 
In reality, Hanzo had traveled back to the Nether Realm to ensure that Havoc would never return. He delivered his decapitated head to the gates of hell and gave it to the Oni, Draman, and Moloch as a plaything. The Oni were excited to torture Havoc in the underworld for all eternity, and Hanzo demanded that they torture him slowly. But the Oni were loyal to Quan Chi and were angry that Hanzo had acted against him. In Earth Realm, Takeda had finished work on a memorial cemetery for his fellow Shirai Ryu, and the last tombstone was for his lost master, Hanzo Hasashi. But Hanzo appeared struggling to escape Moloch's grasp from the Nether Realm, and Takeda threw his hammer at the Oni, sending him plummeting back into the underworld. Havoc's plot to destroy the realms was over, and Hanzo was amazed with Takeda's memorial of the Shirai Ryu, calling Takeda the pride of the clan. Together, they would rebuild again and be more vigilant than ever. In the Nether Realm, Havoc's head was still alive, babbling about bringing chaos to all the realms, and a furious Quan Chi crushed it. He had imbued Havoc with blood magic, and the Cleric of Chaos refused to deliver the amulet as promised. For failing to keep Hanzo in the Nether Realm, Quan Chi made Draman and Moloch pay for their failures. The Revenant Kitana was ordered to behead Moloch, and he tore Draman apart down to his bones. Shinnok's amulet was taken back by Raiden, and he needed a safe place to keep it. Cold Khan agreed that Outworld wasn't a safe place for it, and Sonya Blade promised that it would be hidden well within the Special Forces on Earth Realm. Ending the events of the Mortal Kombat X comic. Takeda continued training with Hanzo. He spent a total of 10 years under his mentorship, and learned everything that Hanzo could teach him. But his future wasn't with the Shirai Ryu. Takeda would become part of a new unit combined with Shaolin, Shirai Ryu, and Special Forces all in one. All in defense of Earthrealm. <laughs> Yield. Well done. You are now Chujin. You honor me, Master Hisashi. Now that I'm Chujin, how will I serve the clan? Your future does not lie with the Shirai Ryu. But... The clan's my family. When I took you in, I promised your father. I don't have a father. Yes, you do. One who's proud of you. A Chujin in record time. You knew he was coming? You said nothing? Knowing this would be your reaction, yes. Takeda, your father is not your enemy. Ten years. No visits. Nothing. You abandoned me. I did not abandon you. I was eight. My mother had just died. Now you come back? Think you can jump right in as a proud dad? Son, I... To hell with you. Kenshi did not abandon you. He brought you here for your protection. Protection from what? From those who murdered your mother. She... She died in an accident. That is the story I asked Master Hasashi to tell you. But in truth, your mother was killed by Red Dragon assassins. I was the target. Su Chin was the victim. Son of a bitch! It was your fault! Your father has devoted his life to fighting animals like the Red Dragon. It is they who are without honor. You shouldn't have hidden the truth. You would have gone after your mother's killers unprepared. I could not risk that. Master Hasashi has perfected your fighting skills. Now it is time to complete your training. How, how did you do that? We are telepaths, a family gift. I can read minds? Through training, we will determine your full abilities. And then we will hunt down the Red Dragon. Together. 
Takeda let his student go, a young man that was like a son to him. Later on, Hanzo received an invitation to the new Lin Kuei Temple from Kwai Liang. Sub-Zero destroyed the Cyber Lin Kuei and recreated his clan, taking over as Grandmaster. Hanzo accepted the invitation cautiously, since tension between the clans still existed, and Kwai Liang desired to bury the past. He had also discovered the truth behind the Shira Ryu's murder, and wished to share the information that he uncovered. You re-establish the Shirai Ryu as I reform the Lin Kuei. We both seek to shed our clan's dark pasts, dedicate them to Earthrealm's protection. Our common purpose gives us a chance to end old rivalries, to start anew. You'll confess what you've long denied? That your clan's hands are soaked in Shirai Ryu blood? In the blood of my family? Our honor is indeed stained. Please, sit. After you and I were freed from Quan Chi's control, I sought out my clan. I had hoped rebellion from within would have quashed the Grandmaster's plans. But Sector had realized his father's vision. The Lin Kuei had been fully cyberized. I pledge to kill Sector and his followers, reform the Lin Kuei, and restore our honor. I am not interested in Lin Kuei politics, Sub-Zero. When I finally killed Sector, I discovered the Lin Kuei had not sacrificed its honor with the Cyber Initiative. We had abandoned it long before. Frost! The Lin Kuei are still without honor! Master Hasashi, wait! For what? More treachery! I will have your head! What is this? I did not bring you here for treachery. Frost is strong, but lacks judgment. She cannot see the wisdom of peace. I will deal with her. You spoke of the Lin Kuei's lost honor. For years, I had thought you would unfairly blame the Lin Kuei for the deaths of your family and clan. But Sector's cyber-preserved memories revealed the truth. Quay need to abide their agreements, Sector. The Grand Master gave Shinnok his word. Shinnok's currency is lies, as is yours. Payment is due. I exterminated the Shirai Ryu as promised. Hanzo Hasashi lives. He's your Spectre Scorpion. I created Scorpion from Hasashi's soul after he died. We observed the agreement. The letter, not the spirit. You are owed nothing. Harumi... Satoshi... Had I known of my clan's complicity in the Shirai Ryu's extinction, our history would be different. I killed your brother because I thought he... Quan Chi is responsible for Bihan's death. Sector was wrong. There is a debt to be paid. And Quan Chi will pay it. Quan Chi was now Hanzo's main target. He had to pay with his life for what he had done. The special forces had already tracked him down and found his location, and the sorcerer was beaten down by Jax and brought in as a prisoner. Sit. I'm guessing it's not your first time in cuffs. What's your safe word? Hanzo found out that Quan Chi had been taken into custody and stormed the Special Forces base where he was being held with the rest of the Shi'ar Ryu, demanding his life. You two are friends, right? He tell you he was coming? Nothing. General, 
Master Hisashi, I hadn't received word you were coming. I will have Quan Chi. We have things under control. You can- He must die. Raiden needs him. Without Quan Chi, we can't restore Liu Kang and the other revenants. You'd leave them trapped? Like you were? Only Quan Chi concerns me. Don't do this, Hanzo. I'll put you down. Then we are at an impasse. Sibiru! I wish you no harm, General Blade. Call off your men, Hanzo. If you value our friendship, you will give me Quan Chi. <laughs> Withdraw. Without Sento, you are vulnerable. Hanzo, no! You've earned great trust for the Shirai Ryu. Do not squander it murdering a withered sorcerer. That withered sorcerer is the architect of my suffering. Unbind him. Scorpion. We can <laughs> My name is Hanzo Hasashi! You killed my wife. My son. And then you burrowed your way into my head. Misdirected my vengeance. Cost me my one chance to have them restored! Your family, I... Ah! Quiet, sorcerer. Nothing can help you now. Scorpion, stop! Run, Chief! Blood for blood, your debt is paid. Shinnok's amulet had been stolen by Kano and sold to Molina, before Devorah claimed it, and just before his death, Quan Chi was able to summon his master. Shinnok escaped to Raiden's Sky Temple where he would attempt to corrupt Earthrealm's life force with his dark powers, and Hanzo told the new Special Forces recruits where to find him. Hanzo was still alive, but too injured to assist them. Takeda and his partners assaulted the Sky Temple and kept the Netherrealm Revenants at bay, while Cassie Cage successfully confronted Shinnok and put an end to his plans, ending the events of Mortal Kombat X. <laughs> Yeah.
during the events of Mortal Kombat 11, the Titan Chronica, mother of Shinnok, and older and more powerful than the Elder Gods, began her own plans to alter history. She had been manipulating multiple events behind the scenes since the dawn of time, in order to create what she saw as the perfect era. Chronica had full control over the timeline of the universe, but time and again, through the eons and multiple timelines, Raiden and his mortals would interfere with her perfect universe. She decided it was time to create a new era without Raiden, and recruited warriors from multiple eras with promises of her own. One of the warriors she recruited was a past version of Hanzo Asashi, from his days as Scorpion. Like so many others before, Kronika promised that she would bring his family and clan back. Empty promises that had manipulated Scorpion in the past. He was sent alongside the Revenant Jade to take care of the threat posed by the younger Liu Kang and Kung Lao. Of course you survived the time merger. You will not stop Kronika from restoring my family and clan. I learned my lesson fighting you at Shang Tsung's tournament. This time, I am prepared. Scorpion was defeated and escaped. Kwai Liang and Hanzo Asashi of the current era had developed a friendship over the years, leading both of their clans in defense of Earthrealm. The Cyberlin Kuei had been resurrected from the past by Kronika, and Kwai Liang requested Master Hasashi's assistance to destroy them, as he had done in the past. Sektor and his cyborgs had taken over an old Cyberlin Kuei factory that was back in production from the Time Rift, and they were kidnapping warriors from Sub-Zero's temple to cyberize. <laughs> Your hearing is failing, Sub-Zero. I recognized your footsteps, Hanzo. Where's Sektor? I will not let him threaten my clan again. The old Cyber Lin Kuei factory was defunct, buried beneath this quarry. Until the time disruption. Now, Sektor's returned and reactivated it. He's building an army by processing Lin Kuei warriors kidnapped from my temple. I can see why you need me. We could enter through that tunnel, but a frontal assault would be... Bloody. Needlessly dangerous. There's another entrance, less populated. And the rest of your plan? We get help on the inside. Inside, they found a horrific sight. Body parts from butchered Lin Kuei members, tubes containing terrible experiments. Kwai Liang felt an immense pain seeing his students massacred in such a horrible way. A pain that Hanzo knew all too well. We'll avenge your clan. Cyrix is your inside man. He was converted against his will. If we disable the behavior inhibitors that control him, he will turn on Sector. All Cyber Lin Kuei are linked to a common network. Cyrax can shut them down from within. Who is the woman? I don't know. Focus on disabling Cyrax. He's the key. The next generation is... <laughs> the Lin Kuei. You corrupted our clan when you made peace with this Shirai Ryu filth. With Kronika's help, I will restore the Lin Kuei's honor. You 
deceive yourself, Frost. Sub-Zero knew that Cyrax was against the Lin Kuei Cyber Initiative and was turned into a cyborg by force. If he could restore his memories, he would willingly destroy the Cyber Lin Kuei from the inside. Before the time rift, Kwai Liang had destroyed them with Cyrax's help and was confident that he would do so again. But his brother Bihan had also returned, and the original Sub-Zero that had taken Hanzo's life. <laughs> Before we face more Cyber Lin Kuei, you'll need a moment to initialize. Sector, show yourself! Recognize me, little brother. Bihan? Yes, it is I. You were killed. Swallowed in a storm of souls. Quan Chi's creations do not die easily. Kronika offers me a new clan to lead. Its shadow will darken the realms. I've beaten your brother before. Quan Chi unleashed your vengeance. Without him, you are weak. <laughs> My strength is more than vengeance. No. He ripped out my heart. Made me a machine. Your soul is intact, Cyrax. Trust me. I speak from experience. Kuan Yang. Is that you? You look so old. And Scorpion? We'll explain later. For now, know we share the same goal. The Cyber Lin Kuei's destruction. We need your help, Cyrax. I can disable their communications network. It will shut down this factory and every Cyber Lin Kuei connected to it. I did not think you were capable of such dishonor, Sub-Zero. Aid Cyrax. Sector is mine. I'm in. I'll reformat the system drives and shut us all down. Goodbye, Kuai Liang. It is not the end. I will find a way to restore you. Anything is possible. Hanzo and I are living proof. Please, don't bring me back as a machine. I can't live like this. Machine or man, you have a warrior soul. As long as I am Grand Master, the Lin Kuei will welcome you. Then until we meet again. Cyrax sacrificed himself and shut down the entire Cyber Lin Kuei factory, and Kwai Liang and Hanzo escaped. Later on, Raiden requested hospitality from the Shirai Ryu, and Hanzo gave him access to his territory for shelter, as he gathered his warriors to form a plan against Kronika. They needed the assistance of the ferrymen of the Netherrealm to cross the Sea of Blood towards Kronika's main headquarters, but he was being tortured by Devorah for refusing to help her. Hanzo selflessly stayed behind to save him, as Sub-Zero reported their discovery back to Raiden and the others. Return to Earthrealm. Tell the others we found him. We'll deploy as soon as I return. Are you certain Karan will aid us? No, but he's our best chance. Get over him. First Shinnok, now Kronika. You fight for lost causes. This one ensures the Hive's survival. You will not save the Shirai Ryu. Glad 
clan of imposters will indeed fall. I've restored the Shiddai Ryu. Built a clan that's never been stronger. On a foundation of pretenders and outsiders, Kronika told me. Without our regional bloodlines, there is no Shirai Ryu. Our clan's massacre extinguished them. Kronika will revive the true Shirai Ryu in the new era. Do not trust Kronika. She uses your anger to enslave you, as Quan Chi did both of us. I let go my rage, and it saved me. We both know what truly drives you. It's not Shirai Ryu pride. It's your wife and child. Harumi and Satoshi were stolen from me. Murdered. Seeing them again is all that matters. We share this pain. I fought through hell to end it. But Kronika's new era is not the remedy. She would resurrect Shinnok, the same devil who brought death to our family and clan. He cannot be allowed to return. When I revived the Shirai Ryu, I vowed our clan would ensure Earthrealm's protection. Help me keep that promise. Hanzo died quietly in the arms of his younger, darker self. The dying words of his future self inspired Scorpion to see past the false promises and the anger, and he agreed to join the others against Kronika, but the others knew the Scorpion as an enemy and slave of Quan Chi. This cannot be good. Get Raiden. The Fire Gardens. Be built. The Shirai Ryu are indeed restored. Why are you here, Scorpion? Where is Grandmaster Hasashi? He is dead. Now you have come to finish us. I understand your mistrust, but I am here to assist you. Grandmaster Hasashi sent you. I honor his dying wish. Karan will ferry your armies to the Isle of Kronika. We must leave at once. Do you have proof of Karan's offer? Only my word. Your word is worthless. At the tournament, I trusted you to spare Bihar, and you betrayed me. A mistake born of rage. I seek redemption. Lord Raiden, we should listen. He may be telling the truth. There is only one way to find out. The truth! 
Aiden, stop this! Step aside, Liu Kang. Put down the amulet. Its darkness is taking hold of you. Our time has run out. I do what I must to save Earthrealm. Stay down. This is not the way. Scorpion is not the enemy this time. Liu Kang, do not interfere. The sequence of events was a manipulation of the timeline by Kronika to pit Raiden and Liu Kang against each other, an event that would send both of them down a dark path in every timeline that had come before. Raiden realized this and came to his senses, finally trusting Scorpion. I have been a fool, Liu Kang. Kronika's puppet. We only battle because she wills it. I must help him. I was wrong to doubt you. I too have been a slave to anger. I... The group set sail across the Sea of Blood. During the voyage, they were attacked by Kronika's forces, and Scorpion fought alongside Sub-Zero and the others. Eventually, Raiden's forces broke through Kronika's defenses, fighting together, and Liu Kang, imbued with the powers of a god, stood against her, ending her threat. After destroying Kronika, Liu Kang found himself at the dawn of time, now in control of the future of the entire universe, ending the events of Mortal Kombat 11. It's yet to be seen how the future will affect all the combatants, but for now, that is the complete history of Hanzo Hisashi and Scorpion. Fatality. Scorpion wins. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.